all three of you, three top favorite sound toys plugins that you use the most often in film score stuff and why. So Jason, starting with you this time, you already got a free one with Decapitator. You pretty much gave us the answer on that. Yeah, one. Decapitator is not a devil lock. You know, I'll use devil lock all the time. And even just subtly, I know it's a super extreme plugin, but a little bit of it to me goes a long way on almost everything just so that you start to pull up that I like to hear noise floor or at least whatever sort of there in subtle recordings. I like to bring that up. I like to hear that stuff just kind of, I want to hear everything. So I'll use a little bit of that on, on everything, on every, you know, basses, drums. I'll put it sometimes on strings, you know, which is kind of a little bit of an odd, unorthodox place to use it. But Echo Boy is on everything it's less too. To smash and more to bring up details. So do you be doing that in parallel, or are you doing it by just using? Well, small that's what I love about the fact that it has a mix knob because I'm I'm lazy. I'm a very lazy mixer, so I don't want to sit there and duplicate a channel, and then you know do a parallel mix of something with like the extreme settings, but just mixed in with the fader up a little bit. I like to just put the plug in on, put it at three percent or you know ten percent, and and then just move on to the next sound. Now, Devil Lock, Echo Boy, Decapitator, easy, sweet. And why uh, Echo Boy instead of some other delay? I, I don't really need to do much with it. I I turn the plug in on and turn the saturation up a little bit, and that's usually the sound for me. Ping pong, eighth note, and a quarter, and that's. That's what I need. It took me a while before I even noticed there's that tweak button where when you press the tweak button, there's like a whole underneath row of settings. And I'm like, oh, fuck. There's like way more shit I can do with this thing. It's like it's like finding out your girlfriend speaks Portuguese or totally. something. Totally. You're like, you you're know way I mean? cooler and hotter than I thought you were originally. And I thought you were super hot already. Like, this is amazing. It's a great, it's like, I love that shit. Hidden gems. How about you, Ryan? I know you don't consider yourself like Mr. Engineer, but what are your, your favorite sound <laughs> Well, it's funny, like, you know, I I started my film scoring thing right around the time, like, you know, about 12 years ago, right when I moved to Vermont. And when I moved here, you know, Sound Toys is based here. So I met a lot of the people. I met Ken and I got to go run around and see all the gear. And I was like, what's that? You know what I mean? So honestly, I kind of learned what plugins were by just learning what sound toy like what sound toy, literally the first plugins i ever had they literally they're just kind of synonymous with just making music for me i really like the uh micro shifter a lot it just feels like it just helps me with spatial stuff i do love the devil lock and i love just like i love blasting the shit out of it and just like compressing the hell out of stuff and sometimes that angry distortion is really good and then you know and a lot of echo boy i always use that 15 IPS, like the Bruce Springsteen, like super quick, uh, that little delay, I use it on everything. I use it on whirlies and I use it on voices. I just find like, that's just, it's almost like you, I just kind of throw it up just to kind of give some space to my stuff because I'm not, I know I'm, I'm not John Bryan recording with a 13th century zither, you know, it just helps me feel like I'm a little bit more compelling as a, as a sonic presenter. Cool stuff. And Dan, you kind of started to hint at this as well, but uh, top three for you? I think the crystallizer. I love it as a synth, like thinking about feeding it. Um, How do you use it sound as a source? synth? I'm really curious, Dan. Just thinking about it as like not an effect. So if you get just the wet playing with it's like the detune in it, like on the, when you hit the tweak and you get that fine tune down there or whatever it's called, playing with that micro tuning there so it's not perfect in and of itself, the way you can blow it out, I guess that's true of almost all the Sound Toys plugins. I love that you can like really just smash the input so it sounds completely different on the output. And then just playing with the ducking, playing with, you know, going back and forth between gate and duck and sending it to something else and then reprocessing it, like recording it and spitting it out. I can get really out of control with the re recycle and the repeat. And I don't know. It's fun to think about it as a, like a textural synthesizer, if that makes any sense especially when you feed two into each other and one's pitch shifting up to one pitch shifting down and they're just like feeding back like crazy. You can get a lot of really weird artifacts and normally artifacts sound like crap, but I love the way sound toys can destroy a sound. Like you said, abuse a sound. It immediately sounds like its own thing. That's why I like throwing decapitator on something. Even if it doesn't need any distortion, I want it to be clean. It's nice to have some timbral variation happening. I don't know if it's like, placebo effect but when i throw it on there i'm like oh yeah that's on there that sounds good it's like when someone's like you know we ran this through a tape machine like i don't need it sure sounds great 
Um, I guess, I guess, yeah, a decapitator would be up there. It's hard to, I really love a uh, little plate for the same reason. Cause I can smash it out, but I think echo boy and I love primal tap. Yeah. I would say they're delays. And the reason why I would use it over a stock delay or another delay is the, the built-in way to smash the input. It feels like a real piece of gear. I learned how to make music by, you know, plugging things into the wrong jack and seeing how it goes. And Sound Toys has a lot of that same level of thinking. Like if you you can destroy a sound putting it in, but you can do a lot to clean it up within the con. Like, oh, and um, I can't remember the name of it because I always just drag it in from the list. But their their dual filter. What's it called? What's their dual filter called? Filter Freak. Filter Freak. Yes, the, I love the Filter Freak, especially especially on the crystallizer. Like getting that back in there. If you like run some long feedback through there, you can get some really nice super soft synthy sounds out of that. And again, I like to, since nothing is finished until like you can't work on it anymore, reorchestrating effects and plugins are great, especially when I'm working with an orchestrator. I work with this guy, James Young, and I'll send him some like heavily processed stuff. He'll arrange for strings. We'll go in the studio, record with the string players, come back, throw the same processing on it and just sort of mess around. I mean, that's the whole point. That's why we got into making music, whether you pick up a laptop or a guitar, it's for some reason, sound is interesting to you and it can be about you know connecting melody or connecting notes or just finding ways for timbres to make sense hey if you like that short clip you're going to love the full-length video it came from you can find it right here also if you're watching this video the week that it comes out sound toys is having a special sale in the honor of sound design and film scoring check it out soundtoys.com you can also subscribe to their channel right here also remember to hit like and subscribe down below thanks for hanging out this has been justin Sonics Group. See you in the next one.